Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. Today, I'll be going over this week's Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week. For the full problem and solution transcript, you can click on the link in the description of this video on our YouTube channel. So, this week's Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week asks you to calculate the eigenvalues and their respective algebraic multiplicities of the given matrix, which is, as you can see here, this matrix 3, negative 3, 0, 2, 1, negative 1, 0, and negative 2, 1, 0. So, we're going to first find, uh, first find the determinant of the matrix with the, so here, we're first going to calculate the determinant. We'll call this matrix A here, just for uh, simplicity. So, determinant of A minus lambda times the 3 by 3 identity matrix. So, we're first going to calculate this determinant, and then we're going to find the roots of the, what's called the characteristic equation, such that we will be able to obtain the eigenvalues. Okay, and the algebraic multiplicities will kind of naturally follow as a result of that. So, okay, so now we're going to find the determinant here. So, I'll just use a notation of the standard um, vertical bar, uh, plain vertical bar for the determinant. So, we have negative 3. We're going to subtract lambda from the diagonals. So, negative 3 minus lambda, 0, 2, 1, negative 1 minus lambda, 0. This over here a little bit. Uh, and then negative 2, 1, Minus lambda. Okay, so we need, we need to calculate the determinant of this matrix. So we know that this is going to be equal to, using a cofactor expansion, negative 3 minus lambda times the determinant of this down here in this corner, negative 1 minus lambda, 0, and 1 minus lambda. And then we're going to subtract, because once again we have negative 1 to the n plus m here. So we're going to have minus 0 times these outer entries here, excluding this uh, middle row and uh, first column. So we have negative one, or one, excuse me, zero, negative two, and negative lambda. And finally, we have two times the determinant of this here in the lower left-hand corner, which is going to be one, negative one minus lambda, negative two, and one. Okay up here. Okay, so now, as you can see, as you can see here, we have a zero on the outside of, on the outside of this, so this entire thing is going to go to zero, so we don't even need to bother calculating the determinant of that two by two matrix. So we're just going to deal with the first and the last term here, as the middle term goes to zero. Okay, so this is going to be equal to Keeping the term on the outside the same, negative 3 minus lambda. And then here we're going to do multiply the diagonals and then subtract the other diagonals by the standard formula for calculating the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix. So we have in here, uh, nested parentheses, negative 1 minus lambda, quantity minus negative lambda, minus 0 times 1. And then plus over here, same thing, 2 times 1 times 1. Uh, this should be negative 1, excuse me, negative 1 minus lambda, yeah, this should be negative 1 down here, excuse me. Okay, great, so we have 1 times negative 1 minus, and then we're going to multiply these two terms here, negative 2 and negative 1 minus lambda. Okay, great. So now we can just simplify that out and try to factor to find the roots of this characteristic polynomial. Okay, so what I'm just going to do all in kind of one fell swoop here is I'm going to simplify, simplify these terms here by distributing, and then I'm going to factor like terms, or I'm going to combine like terms inside of each factor. So we'll end up getting here negative 3 minus lambda, just the same thing out here. And then inside here we have lambda plus lambda squared, and then as this just goes to zero, we can see here, and then plus two on the outside here, stays the same, and then simplifying on the inside of this, on the inside of that term there, will give you negative three minus two lambda, which multiplying out and once again distributing out and combining like terms will give you the following characteristic polynomial, negative lambda cubed, minus 4 lambda squared, minus 7 lambda, 
minus 6. OK, so it's not immediately clear to us how we're going to approach factoring said this characteristic polynomial here. So a good way to approach this is to just graph this on a calculator. Um, you can just plug in you know, negative 3x cubed minus 4x squared minus 7x minus 6 to try to see, OK, so are there you know, any real roots that we can kind of factor out? Or are they all complex? And in this case, if you graph it, you can see that this uh, function here will, in, will ha cross the x-axis at the point x is equal to negative 2, which is great. Uh, so because then we can factor out uh, lambda. So technically, it's lambda. So we can factor out uh, lambda plus 2 factor. As you can see, if, if it crosses, it'll look something like this here, where it has some other complex roots, um, as we will find out later. And it crosses the x-axis here at lambda equals minus 2. We just add 2 to both sides. Get lambda plus 2 is equal to 0. OK, great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to factor out a lambda plus 2. Well, how do we do that? So the way that we're going to do that is by using polynomial long division, using lambda as our variable. OK. So we're going to give ourselves a little bit of room here to factor out. I'll assume the viewer is more or less familiar with polynomial long division. OK. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to set up the long division problem. Okay, I leave myself enough room here. OK, so negative lambda cubed minus 4 lambda, just copying this characteristic polynomial. Minus 7 lambda minus 6. All divided by our factor that we factored out, which is lambda plus 2. OK. So now we're going to try to assess what we need to multiply this by in order to get lambda plus or lambda on the outside here to be negative lambda cubed. And in this case, we are going to get that you need to multiply everything by, oops, squared, excuse me. You need to multiply everything out here, the all of lambda plus 2, by negative lambda squared. So we end up getting here negative lambda squared times lambda is going to be negative lambda squared. Uh, right, negative lambda squared, and then we have negative lambda squared times 2 is going to be negative. 2 lambda squared. OK, so we're going to subtract all of this. So we switch the signs here. This goes to 0, as we were trying, 4. And then negative 4 lambda squared plus 2 lambda squared is going to be negative 2 lambda squared. OK, so what do we need to multiply lambda to lambda plus 2 by to get the first term to go into negative 2 lambda squared? Well, we need to multiply everything by negative 2 lambda here. Okay, so we have minus 2 lambda. And we're going to bring down this term here negative 7 lambda. OK, so negative 2 lambda times lambda is going to be negative 2 lambda squared. And negative 2 lambda times 2 is going to be negative 4 lambda. OK, so we're subtracting here. So we can switch those signs there. This goes to 0, just like we were trying for. And negative 7 lambda plus 4 lambda is going to be negative 3 lambda. OK, so it looks like we have one last step here. So we're going to bring down the negative 6. OK, so it looks like we're going to need to multiply lambda plus 2 by negative 3 in order to get um, lambda into negative 3 lambda. So we're going to multiply everything by negative 3. And it turns out here we get minus 3 lambda minus 6, which will end up just all going to 0. So we have no remainder. Great. OK, so now that we've finished that polynomial long division, we have found, uh, we have found that we can write our characteristic polynomial, which is a little space over here. Okay, we can write our characteristic polynomial, which is negative lambda cubed minus four lambda squared minus seven lambda minus six. We can write this as lambda plus two times all of that there, which is negative lambda squared minus two lambda minus three. Great. So we already have one eigenvalue here, which is going to be equal to negative two because that's one of the roots of this equation here. But now we need to solve We need to solve this, negative lambda squared minus 2 lambda minus 3. So what are the roots of that? So as it would turn out, as we'll soon find, um, there are no real roots to this quadratic equation. 
So there are, two there are going to be two complex roots, however, which we'll see by using the quadratic formula. So as we can tell here, just for clarity, a is equal to negative 1, b is equal to negative 2, and c is equal to negative 3 in terms of a, b, and c of the coefficients here, such that we can use a quadratic formula plug in these coefficients. Okay, so we're going to use a quadratic formula here. So we can find lambda is going to be equal to um, opposite b, so that's going to be negative 2 times negative 1, which is 2, um, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 2 quantity squared is going to be 4, minus 4 times negative 1 times negative 3. So 4, negative 1, negative 3, all over 2 times a. So 2 times negative 1 is going to be negative 2. Okay, great. So I'm just going to simplify this inside of the radical here. So we have lambda is equal to 2, plus or minus, so 4. So 4 times negative 1 times negative 3 is going to be 12. So 4 minus 12 is clearly negative 8, less than 0 plus or minus the square root of negative 8 all over negative 2. So this here is going to be our indicator that we have no real roots to this polynomial, to this quadratic um, equation, excuse me. Um, so we're going to use i in order to solve this in terms of the complex roots. So we're going to get here. Lambda is going to be equal to 2 plus or minus, so we can factor out this as being, if we want, negative 4 times 2. Same thing, all over 2. I'm just doing this step so that you can see how we're solving, how we're bringing out an i here. So this is going to be equal to, so the square root of negative 4 is going to be 2i. So we have here 2 plus or minus 2i root 2 all over negative 2. Negative 2, excuse me. Okay, so our final step here is going to be just dividing out the negative 2 from everything because as you can see, we have a common factor of negative 2. And then we'll have our two complex roots. Okay, so, okay, so we're just going to divide out the negative 2 here. That's not going to switch. I mean, we could technically switch the plus or minus sign, but uh, it doesn't really matter in this case. So we have... Lambda equals, so 2 divided by negative 2, negative 1, plus, oops, plus square root of 2i, and not over anything. Okay, so as you can see, we have here disguised two, uh, two eigenvalues, because we have the plus and the minus. So finally, we have, just writing this all out, we have our first eigenvalue of negative 2, and then our second two eigenvalues, negative 1 plus square root 2i and negative 1 minus square root 2i. And each of these, uh, it, will, it will be easier to see if we uh, do this here. So actually, yeah. So this is, in other words, um, this is equal to just bringing down the lambda plus 2. And then we figured out that this is factored as um, 1 plus or minus, this would be factored as oh, lambda plus 1 uh, plus or minus or plus uh, square root of 2i, and then lambda plus 1 minus square root of 2i. So you can see that each one of these factors occurs only once in the factorization here of our characteristic polynomial. Therefore, each one of these eigenvalues has algebraic multiplicity of 1. So we have come to the solution of our original problem, which was to find the eigenvalues and their corresponding algebraic multiplicities of the given matrix here. And as we can see, we ended up with one real eigenvalue and two complex eigenvalues, all three of them with uh, algebraic multiplicity of 1. So that solves this week's advanced knowledge problem of the week. So for more problem of the, problems of the week, you can click on our playlist here to subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. You can click here. And to visit us at centerofmath.org, click this link here. Thank you for watching.